In this video, I'm going to show you how to animate in Quill using the frame by frame technique. This is similar to stop motion animation or 2D animation tools such as Adobe Animate. Some important hotkeys to know are that you can push up on your left analog stick to create new blank frames. You can go left and right through your timeline by pressing left and right on the left analog stick. You can delete keys by holding the left trigger and pushing down. You can clone keys by holding the left trigger and pushing up. And you can hold keys by pressing down. With held keys, you can go in between and make a clone by holding the left trigger and pushing up to create keys in between. To animate this ball, I'm going to select it, hold the left trigger, and push up to make a copy. Then, I'm going to move this copy. As you can see, the previous frame is shown in red. If I make another key, and now go back, you can see that the first frame is in red, and the upcoming frame is in blue. This is called onion skin, and it's used to show you where your animation is going and where it came from, to help you better align the frames in between. You can adjust the amount of onion skin here. You can choose whether or not you want two frames, three frames, all frames, or one frame showing in between your animations. You can turn the onion skin off with the button beside it here. Showing all frames at once could impact performance. Moving right along, I'll continue grabbing the ball, making a clone, moving it, moving it again, So now I'm coming back down, but I can't see the first frame. To show the first frame so it can loop back seamlessly, turn on the loop button here to set the clip to play again. Now I can see where my first and last frame is going to be. You can go back and forth through your animation to make sure all the keys are in the right spot. Because this is a quill animation and all your frames are individual, you can take a tool like the grab tool and you can add things like squash and stretch on your in-between poses. You can even take a frame out and simply replace it with whatever you'd like. By pushing down on the left analog stick, you can hold frames. Now, I'm going to show you a shortcut for quickly animating with this technique. In previous videos, I've explained that holding the left trigger and grabbing objects will create copies like this. However, if you go to the transform window here, and select the Animate Duplicate Transform Selection button. You can now create new frames by holding the left trigger and grabbing. You can use this technique to very quickly block out animations. Just as before, you can go back frame by frame and adjust the position of these frames as you like. The frame by frame technique can also be used to animate more complex objects like characters. Take this boxer for example. I'm going to animate her doing a simple punch. By grabbing and moving strokes, I'm going to pose her into a fighting stance. Once I'm happy with this initial pose, I'm going to hold the left trigger, push up to create a clone frame. In this clone frame, I'm going to create the next extreme pose. Now, we have two poses, pose 1 and pose 2. If we play back now, it'll obviously be way too fast. So, I'm going to press down on the left analog stick to hold the frames for a little while. Now, if I play it, we have an animation like this. But it's too choppy. Two frames is not enough. So, I'll now go in between and create some in-betweens. With this in-between, I'll now grab strokes 
and put them directly in between the two onion skin layers, the red and the blue. It can be a bit hard to judge, but you get used to it. I like to use the grab tool to subtly move things like heads to the in-between poses. Be sure to look at your model from all sorts of different angles to make sure the onion skin lines up from different perspectives. Remember that by holding down the left trigger, you can either add to your selection or deselect from your selection, depending on how much pressure you put on the trigger. With these three poses, it's already looking much better. To create some impact, I'm going to create a copy of the punch here. And on the first punch frame, I'm going to use the grab tool to overextend this pose. Now when we play back, it should have more kick. We can also add some smear frames to this punch. All we need now is a return back to the first pose. All we need now is a return back to the first frame. We can quickly do this by going to the last frame of our hold here, pressing up on the left analog stick to create a blank frame, going back to frame two, selecting it, and hitting the copy selection to current frame button here. Now, when we play back, she'll go and she'll return. You can go back and modify this sort of animation as much as you want. You can get incredibly detailed. The more frames you add, the more smooth the animation will be.